Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is August 24th and this is my weekly shop update. So I've got another kind of thing like I've been doing lately. Do a little walk around. Uh, a few things going on here in the shop and I'll show you those first. Then we'll head back up into the room upstairs and we'll take a look at the flooring project. Then we'll head back down here and I'll give you some more updates. So one of the things I did this week was replace the coupler for my drum sander. Here's what the old one looked like. The whole set of them. They're pretty much done. So that was totally worn out and the sander wasn't really working anymore. So here's what the new one looks like installed in there. It's actually a really easy, actually, it's actually a really easy thing to install. Um, if you have this problem, you just remove these four bolts here and that disconnects the motor. The motor actually can come off and this whole assembly here will, will separate as well. So you can actually get in here and change these out real easily. Um, I did a couple of things to make it a little bit easier. I blocked up the whole assembly here. I put some blocking underneath it so when I disconnected it, this wouldn't fall down. And did the same thing underneath the motor so that wouldn't fall down either. And it worked fine. And it was really quick and uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I've been putting that one off for a long time. <laughs> Over here by the bench, I used to have a floor sweep that went from up here from that from that Y straight down to the ground and I had another Y on here that popped off if I wanted to you know plug something else into the dust collection system never used it I haven't used it probably in like three years and it just kind of cluttered things up and it kept this door from opening all the way so I had less space to walk around my bench so I removed that whole drop there and I'm kinda happy I did so there it is right now I gotta find somewhere to put that now or give it away or something. Over the bench area, I installed some more lighting. <laughs> so I added another fixture here. And then I had this fixture in the house before. This is a four foot fixture. I had that one, I bought that one a while ago, but never put it up. So I put it up and now it's super bright over here by the bench, which is awesome. But then when I walk anywhere else in the shop, it just feels super dim. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of chasing my tail on that one, but at least for over here, the bench shots should be really, really well lit now. So that's going to be really nice. So the floor is pretty much ready to go. I've been going over it with the random over sander just to kind of clean up a little bit after the floor sander went over it. Uh, that gave me the opportunity to kind of clean up the scratch pattern from the floor sander. It was a little bit of a muddier look and this really cleaned it up pretty well. I just have to finish sanding this little bit right here and then I'll be ready to go. I'm planning on applying the finish tomorrow or starting tomorrow with the first coat. And I had a question last week and I couldn't respond because they had their um, re replies disabled. But they asked me if I had read the MSDS for the, the product I'm gonna use. And previously I had it, but I already knew that it was some pretty nasty stuff. Um, but just to kind of talk through that real quick, why I'm not too worried about using it. The room I'm in right now, the only access point to the house is this door right here. And I picked up some plastic sheeting and I'll be masking off or basically walling this off with the plastic before I start. And then that'll keep any of the fumes hopefully from entering the house. Um, and then the other thing about this room is it's not on the HVAC for the rest of the house. So I don't have to worry about the fumes permeating through the whole house that way either. Um, so when I come in in the morning, I'll seal this off, I'll finish the whole floor, and then I'll have the windows and stuff closed initially to keep the dust out. And then when it's uh, dry to the touch, I'll open the doors and the windows and I'll let everything circulate through and let it off gas that way. Uh, Lindsay and JR are going to be gone the entire day. I'm going to start this probably around 7 in the morning and they're going to leave and we probably won't come home until maybe 9 or 10 at night. So that should give the first coat here plenty of time to off gas enough that it's not going to be too bad in the house or any fumes that do get through this little curtain into the house will kind of dissipate on their own. The other thing is it's summertime, we don't have air conditioning, so the windows in the house, all of them are all open right now. So again, like it's more opportunity for the fumes to kind of leave the house but I'm really looking forward to getting the finish on here. I've got a lot of cool 
A lot of cool green. I'm looking forward to seeing pop like this bit of, this, this is probably one of my favorite spots. It's all curly and that's really cool. Got a lot of spots like this throughout the floor from that same log. And I've got some crotch figure as well. So this is gonna be a pretty cool looking floor when it's done. Oh, and this is pretty cool too. I stopped at Home Depot today and I found this piece of curly bird's eye maple in the stack with the, uh, you know, the regular boards. So I picked that up because, you know, why not? <laughs> so the other thing I started working on this week is a trailer project. If you missed that shop update where I talked about what I'm going to be doing with that trailer, check it out here. Uh, basically I'm making a trailer to go out and get logs with. So I started out by just cutting the seat channel that's going to go in the middle to fill in that center area. I cut those to length with my angle grinder. I ended up using that because my uh, cutoff saw just wouldn't cut through that C channel. I'm not sure why. It made it just too much material and it just, just wouldn't cut any further than just the wings on it or something. I don't know. But anyway, I got that stuff cut to length and then I started trying welding for the first time. And that was with my, uh, my stick welder, my arc welder. And that went really well actually. I, I was expecting it to be a little more difficult to get things started with that. And all I did was just take a well, it's going to be part of the deck for the trailer, which is a big flat piece of steel. And I just tried running some just simple beads on it. And at first, they weren't that great, but it was pretty surprising to me how quickly I could see the improvement from, from bead to bead to bead, which was really uh, motivating for me. <laughs> so they're still not perfect. I still have some more practicing to do, but they're certainly coming quite a long way from where they were. Uh, the one thing I'm having problems with right now, or I'm trying to focus on improving, is I'm having trouble um, being able to tell how far I am from the surface with that stick. And I'm sure it's probably just a lot to do with my, uh, my positioning with my body and where I'm at and where I can see. So just kind of working with that and just getting a feel for the whole motion and how fast to move through the, through the, um, through the bead. It's just, uh, it's just something that probably is going to take a little more time and a little more practice. but. I think once I'm done with the structure on the trailer, I'll be a lot better at it. And the, the nice thing about the trailer is that the way that I'm welding these structural pieces in, I have a lot of space on there where I can do some more practicing directly on the trailer itself. Because those new seat channels, they are going to sit between some longer seat channels and they're going to sit on some smaller seat channels. And the, the probably the more important welds are going to be the ones on the ends of the new seat channel and then the less important one is going to be the one on the long, along the bottom of the C-channel attaching it to the old C-channel or the small C-channel on the bottom. That's not as important as those welds on the end, so I'll have more time to practice on the trailer itself before getting to the actual critical welds. But a lot of fun so far. It's been... I don't know, I've never done it before, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's about it for this week. I hope I got everything. Nope, I didn't. <laughs> tomorrow, Tuesday, I always forget about this because I have to go do it now. <laughs> tomorrow, Tuesday, August 25th, will be a new episode of the Matt and Matthew Show. That's going to be a shop tour with Matt Kenny. Um, that was a lot of fun. Matt showed us around his shop, and it's always nice to see what, how other people have their stuff set up. So I'm looking forward to having that released tomorrow once I get that edited because I'm doing that. I'll be editing that tonight. Because I always wait to the last minute for those. So check that out. I'll have a link in the description. And I think I can put one on the screen here too if you want to check out the Matt and Matthew show. Which is a show that I do with Matthew Morris from MM Wood Studio. If you haven't seen it already. So I think that's for real all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today. Or anything here in my shop. Please feel free to leave a comment. As always, I appreciate those. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time. Ow. <laughs> Happy woodworking.